Torque can be described as turning force. How, how hard you try to turn something. For instance, we have our first machine, a lever. You want to move this rock, so you jam a rod in there, something very rigid, and if we can turn this rod, if you can make it turn, the rock will move. And so we apply a torque to this to try to get it to turn. We're trying to turn it about this point, the fulcrum. This is a center of rotation. Torque is a cross product. Radius cross force gives me torque. So what does that mean? Let's say we want to turn this. You're going to apply a force where? Would you want to apply it here? Would you want to apply it here? We know from experience that we want to get out as far as possible, maximizing what we call the moment, the moment arm of our torque. And so we have a radius, and we also have a force, but we know if I pull in this direction, I won't get any torque. I won't get any turning effectiveness. So it's only the perpendicular component of the force that gives me torque. And so we can go backwards and say, it's the radius. Here's the radial vector, right? Radius times the perpendicular component of the force, which is R times F times sine theta, because sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And so that's what a cross product means. This vector times the other vector times the sine of the included angle. The sine of the included angle times the force gives you just that perpendicular component. Torque also has a direction. It can be determined with your right hand. Radius cross force gives me a torque in this direction. My thumb points the direction of the torque, but my fingers describe the rotation. It's very different than if the force was upward then the torque would be in this direction. The torque would be pointing out, but you know that would create a rotation in this direction. Furthermore, it's different than if I pushed into the board. Then the torque would tend to turn this bar in this direction. If I apply this force, I can calculate the torque. The units will turn out to be in Newton meters, which is not a jewel because no work's been done. Why might this move the rock? Why might this apply a huge force to the rock? For this, we look to rotational dynamics. The torque is equal to I times alpha, where alpha is the angular acceleration. But this isn't accelerating. It's just sitting there, static. So this is also our first static problem. And this is dealt with very nicely in section 9.5 of your text where they talk about pulling out a nail. So if I'm applying a torque, why isn't it rotationally accelerating? It's because it's the vector sum of the torques. There's another torque on this. What's preventing this from accelerating? There's a torque in the opposite direction from the rock. Right, the rock is applying a force right here in that direction, which is applying a torque trying to turn this in the opposite direction. So I'm trying to turn it this way, and the torque of the rock is trying to turn it this way. The thing is, the torque of Pete is equal to this radius times my perpendicular force. And let's call that the radius of Pete. The torque of the rock is equal to the radius of the rock times the force that the rock puts on it, which of course is equal to the force that this is putting on the rock, which is why we're doing this in the first place, right? And so what we see is if there's no angular acceleration, we know that the vector sum of the torques is zero, which is why it's our first statics problem, because there's no motion. It's static. So what we know if these two torques, unless there's more, they have to equal zero. They have to be equal and opposite. So if I set the torques equal to each other in magnitude, who cares about the sign right now? We can see they're in opposite directions. What we can see is the force that I put on the rock, the force that the rock puts on me, which is equal to the force I put on the rock, compared to the force that I'm applying to the end here, is just equal to these ratios. And because this moment arm, this radius of heat, 
is much greater than this little radius of the rock. Because this is much greater than this. The force applied onto the rock is much greater than the perpendicular component of the force I put here. So I want to move that rock. I'm going to make this moment arm big. I'm going to pull as perpendicularly as I can. And I'm going to know I have a force multiplier here. And the ratio of the forces is the inverse of the ratio of the radii. Do I get something for nothing? We don't get something for nothing because force is not conserved. It's okay that I get a much greater force out than I put in. It's energy that's conserved. And we remember that work is equal to the change in energy, which is equal to force times delta x. And sure, in order to move this guy a small amount, I'm going to have to move my arm very much. So if this is one-tenth the length of this, I'll have to move ten times as far, but I'll get ten times as much force out on this side as I apply on this side.